Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News, a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. That being said, the first thing we've got to talk about this week is We The People's new Free Coaster Cassette Hub. Seems like these things are taking over lately. We The People has a new hub called the Hybrid Hub and Lux BMX did a little bit of an explainer video on this hub, taking it apart and showing the internals and how it works. And basically this hub is the next evolution of the Ezra Salt Trapeze style Free Coaster Cassette Hub. It's not a planetary hub, it is different, but it's got an upgraded internal from the Ezra and Salt Trapeze that allows you to adjust slack easily. So you've got three different slack options in there that are more easily adjustable. And then you can also turn it into a full-time cassette simply by adding some springs into the driver. Because with this one, the driver actually uses magnets to pull the paws down. And if you're not familiar with this style of free coaster hub, the driver actually pulls the paws downward until this ramp piece is pedaled forward against them, pushing them up. And that means that with this one, the magnets are pulling it down. And all you have to do to turn it into a normal cassette is put the included springs into the driver, just like you would see with a profile hub. They're very similar looking springs. And then that means it's a cassette full time. You don't have to worry about anything. You actually even take out some of the free coaster internals when you do this because you don't need them. And it's just kind of a cool concept and it's cool to see we the people taking something that previously existed and then taking it to the next level and improving it and trying to make it better and just trying to take things further. And I personally believe that these new free coaster cassette style hubs like the Free Night Planetary and the BSD Revolution and others that are coming as well as this we the people hybrid hub are just going to leave the old conventional clutch style free coasters in the past because anymore you don't need those. You don't need the wobbly wheel because it's got plastic clutch assemblies. You don't need the heaviness of it. You can get something like this that gives you the exact same results and effect whenever you're riding it, but only it's lighter, more durable, more reliable, and cheaper even. The We The People Hybrid Hub comes in at $140 retail. That's crazy. That's super, super cheap to get a coaster or a cassette if you choose. This feels like it could be a really great option for someone who feels like they might want a free coaster but isn't quite sure if they want to move away from their cassette and doesn't want to quite commit to the $240 of the Revolution or Planetary Hub yet to get the best of both worlds. It just kind of feels like these new hubs are making it less and less necessary to have the old conventional clutch style hubs. I know there's some people out there who really like these hubs, so I don't think they'll ever completely disappear, but I do feel like in the next couple years, we're just only going to be seeing these cassette coaster style hubs. And with that, this is one that I really wanna hear you guys' thoughts on because as you know, if you've been on this channel for quite some time, these new free coaster cassette style hubs, the planetary internals are very close to me and I very much so enjoy them and promoting them. And to see another style hub that's a free coaster cassette hybrid, literally hybrid, it might not be a planetary is still very exciting to me and i think it might be very exciting to other people moving forward especially with that price tag moving on from there the new pumped bmx flow game was officially released yesterday this one is based on the original pumped bmx games except this one is one free and two has infinite levels to it which is pretty cool and it says here that every single day a new and unique level is generated that's pretty cool. And there's also some other features here. Of course, the infinite levels I mentioned, the daily competitions, which is kind of cool. It's got over 300 challenges as well as unlockable track pieces. I'm not sure what that means, but that sounds interesting. Tricks, bikes, and characters, as well as game center leaderboards into this game. This is pretty cool, and if there's anyone out there who's already played through this one, let me know how you're enjoying it in the comments down below. Moving on from there, we've got the news that Brad Sims is now riding for Maxis. It feels like we finally moved on past all of that drama from about a month ago at this point, and now he's riding for Maxis. Then we've got a Welcome to Volume Pro video from Jaren Barboza. We previously announced that he was on Volume Pro, and here is his Welcome video, as well as a Welcome to Shadow and Sabrosa video for Reese Drury. 
Then we've got an interview over on our BMX with Premium's new riders, Markel Jones and Matt Clausen. This is a written interview, so check that one out if you want to. And it's pretty cool to see all of these highlight things that we get to talk about in the news this week, and it's such varying things. There's so much more to talk about here, starting with the videos from this week, which there are so many videos from this week, so I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get right on into them. First, we've got Brock Rayford versus The Big Easy. You might remember when Brock was announced to be riding for Red Bull, all of these really amazing pictures came out where he's riding on Mardi Gras floats and there was that insane double peg to hard 360 off of the top of the float into the ramp. And there was no video for it, it was kind of weird. Maybe there was a video somewhere and I didn't catch it, but it just seemed kind of weird. There was no video that came with it because there's no way Red Bull was gonna do all of this and then not film it. Well, we have a video now, it's up on RBMX's YouTube channel and it's kind of an interview and following along with the project. And then towards the end, there's a little bit of a riding edit in there. It kind of felt like this one was edited for TV or Red Bull TV maybe. With the way that it felt while I was watching it, it kind of felt like a TV show, but that literally doesn't mean anything other than how I felt while I was watching it. The writing in here is amazing. The production value in here is amazing. I just can't believe it took this long for it to hit YouTube. Kind of crazy with how much you can see went into this project in this video and how serious they were about the videoing of this project. Either way though, this is definitely one that you need to check out, especially with how massive that Pegs Hard 3 was. And I'm excited to see what Red Bull and Brock Rafer do moving forward because Brock is an animal and Red Bull is the, the Red Bull. And then after that, you might remember Casey Starling's Welcome to Pro video for Kink, where he did the flare to backlash on that street setup. This video that just came out this past week is a behind the scenes or behind the clip video from that with Kink, where j Row, the main guy behind Kink, and Daryl Taco, the guy who filmed all of this, are having a phone conversation with all of the behind the scenes footage playing over top of the phone conversation. Jay is asking all these questions about the clip and the setup and Casey and all of these things. And Daryl's giving the answers while the subsequent video plays in the background and my goodness you could tell from the video how crazy this was but then you see the behind the scenes footage and how much work Casey put into this and one thing that seriously stood out to me in all of this is the fact that in this entire behind the scenes video with how hard you see Casey eat it you did not see him get mad or throw his bike one single time it didn't look like he was yelling or anything this dude was just in the zone, going to work and making something happen without any kind of crazy yelling or anything like that. And I was just seriously impressed by that because I could see how something this serious and this wild could kind of mentally break someone, honestly. And it's really, really cool to see the behind the scenes of it and kind of appreciate something that is genuinely as amazing as this trick was. It definitely takes someone like Casey Starling to do this. And I also found it crazy that it was like a several month period between when he first tried it and the other attempts at it and then when he finally landed it. You can literally see his hair get longer and his bike changing through the video and they talk about how many different bikes he was riding throughout this. This is another one that's definitely worth checking out and worth watching the battle to see it in the end. And I think there was even a secondary angle that was included in this video that we didn't see in his Welcome to Pro edit, which I was really excited about as well, because I wanted to see more angles of this insane trick. And then I'm so excited every week when we have all these different things to talk about. We have so many different types of riding to talk about this week. We have a heavy session at the wetlands. This is a trails video that has so many different shredders in it. And then we've got other trails videos, flatland, the street video we just talked about as well as Brock Rayford riding Mardi Gras floats, so many different cool things. But this wetlands video has Anthony Napolitan, Mike Hucker Clark, Larry Edgar, Pat Casey, Tucker Smith, Mason Ritter, and more in it. All of these dudes are super shredders when it comes to everything they touch. So you know that this is going to be an enjoyable video. Then after that, we've got one from Relic called Ramblin' in the Northeast. And this one's actually got Maddie Aquazap, Clint Reynolds, 
ever peacock and more in it so these guys are the more traditional trail style riders i would say versus the people from the last clip who are like trick kind of guys i guess you could say i'm not trying to offend anyone here but it's like but like maddie aquazap and clint reynolds and ever peacock are the guys who like roast in huge kickouts over these dirt jumps while someone like mike hucker clark or mason ritter is going to do a big 360 bar hump or do some kind of heel clicker to tail whip craziness but also be able to do the giant kickouts. I'm just saying that these videos have different styles to them. Then there's another trails video that came out this week with Leandro Moreria and Gustavo Balalaca at Caracas Trails. So three different trails videos from this week. And then just to contrast the trails completely, we've got a Flatland video out called Timeless from Kevin Nikolski. Then we can go back to the streets with Jacob Cable and Hobie Doan for USL. It's a behind the scenes video from their Blow Up the Streets video that they're working on. It will be released whenever the Blow Up the Streets contest comes out from the USL. But then we can move to another street video. It's called Couple of Clips from Doomed with Sam Jones and Jordan Goodwin and then just to throw something else completely different in there and a little bit of shameless self-promotion here I had an edit come out this week for my time out in Nebraska called going nowhere which I'm extremely psyched about so check that one out if you haven't yet and then we can go to the past more variety how to dirt jump snap I'm not sure what that means I might not be old enough to know what that means but it's like 22 minutes long and Brian Foster's in here there's so many names in here Tim Fuzzy Hall, Brian Foster, Mike Aiken, Corey Anastasio, Matt Berenger, TJ Lavin, Robbie Miranda, and more. How crazy is it that of that list of amazing riders, Corey Anastasio is still like at the top of his game. And this video came out in 1999. Kind of crazy. And I know there's a lot of you guys who probably saw this video when it was new who are going to be excited to watch it now. Now we've got another older video. We had Dave Freiman's section from this one in a past news video, but the entire DK Damn Kids full length video is now up online to check out. And I think there's a few of you who are gonna be stoked on that one. And then there's another video I wanted to talk about this week. It's Billy Perry's Brazil Jam. This video, I, I didn't even watch it, I'll be honest. I just looked at the thumbnail, but judging from the thumbnail with how many people are there with Billy Perry right there in the middle and how many people and the influence that he had to bring all of these people out in Brazil. I think that they had help from something called DRB Bikes because that's in the title of this one, but just the amount of people who are around from someone like Billy Perry who's just making videos on the internet and riding his bike and bringing out that many people for a good time is something that I wanted to promote. And then we can go into the product related videos from this week. We've got a medieval frame promo, which features none other than Montana Ricky, Oscar Ruiz, and Mike Rose riding the new Templar frames from medieval. Then we've got a video with Ty Morrow promoting the Eclat Storm Fork. He's actually talking about why he chooses to ride this fork and some things about it in this video. Then we've got another one with Jordan Goodwin, this time to promote his signature colorway in an Etni shoe. This is an edit is over two minutes long so if you enjoy Jordan's writing check this one out followed by the interviews from this week we've got an interview from Vital BMX with Kenneth Tensio this is a sit down style interview with a high production value there's a lot of b-roll stuff in here and a lot of stuff from Kenneth's past including video and pictures of him growing up riding and Kenneth if I said Kevin I'm sorry Kenneth talking about his riding and growing up riding and how he got his first BMX bike and all of these different things and his evolution in BMX throughout the years. And it was genuinely a really, really awesome interview. And everyone who was involved with this one did a great job putting it together. Then we've got What's Up with Alex Heim from Lux BMX. This one's got some riding in it, some questions in it, and some answers. It's over 17 minutes long, so check that one out if you're an Alex Heim fan. Followed by another in the Caught Up series from Fit. This time with Kurt Perkins and that is followed by another in the What's Your Story series from 5050 Skate Park this time with Andrew York the owner of Messerol Bike Shop and I really enjoyed this video. Andrew has such a good positive outlook on BMX and in general and you can just kind of get a feel for how much this dude cares about BMX and wants to promote it in a positive way and be a positive influence and that's kind of what it seems like led him to be the owner of a bike shop and he gives some backstory on himself and BMX and I just genuinely enjoyed this one they did a fantastic job putting it together and you could just genuinely see how much this dude cares about BMX so with that being said let me know your guys thoughts on all these new free coaster cassette hubs that have been coming out pump BMX anything else that I talked about this week subscribe 
subscribe down below while you're leaving a comment if you haven't yet, and hopefully that'll mean that we'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thank you for watching.